Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. Today I'm replacing the injectors on this Ford 5000 diesel. If you have a Ford 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, or 7000 series tractor, the techniques are going to be the exact same and you'll be able to follow along. So let's get to work. The very first thing we'll do is take the ground battery cable off of the tractor. This is just for safety so that we don't have any accidental arcing while we're working on it. I'm going to remove that battery cable, push it off to the side, and then down here there's a wing nut and that will just pull off and down and then the battery will swing off to the side to reveal the injectors underneath. So let's talk about why we're replacing the injectors on this tractor. Uh, replacing injectors is a regular part of maintenance that needs to be performed on a tractor. How long the injectors last is going to depend on the quality of fuel. If you are transferring fuel to your tractor in a can, you have a higher risk of contamination rather than pumping right from um, a big tank into your tractor. Um, it's part of regular maintenance. This tractor starts really hard. It doesn't crank over and start right away. It's wet stacking. So those are further indications to me that the injectors need to be replaced on this tractor. If your tractor has similar characteristics, it doesn't necessarily mean that the injectors need to be replaced, but it is very likely. And because it's part of regular maintenance, it's a good thing to do on your tractor. I'm taking my banjo bolts off the top of the injector here. When I do that, it frees up the return line so that I can get to the injector. I took the banjo bolt off down there. Notice how they're hollow on the inside. That does make them a little bit fragile. So when you are removing yours, just work carefully so that you don't break them off. Next, we have two nuts on the sides of the injectors here, and those will come off. Let me loose, take that the rest of the way with my finger. It's the same on both sides of the injector here. So let me get my extension down in there. There we go. Get on this one. The next part I'm going to take off is these high pressure injection lines. And then my injector will be freed up to come out. I'm going to use a 5 8 wrench here on these lines. If you are working on a three cylinder Ford, like a 2000, 3000, or 4000, this engine is the same, it just has three cylinders instead of four, like on my 5000. And then if you're working on a 7000 series, you're going to see a turbocharger on it, but the process here is the exact same, so your tractor is going to look just like mine in that way. So now you can see I have my injector completely cleared. Everything is off of the top of it that needs to be removed. Next I'm going to take this pry bar and I'm going to get underneath the injector here and pry it up out of there. I saw it move a little bit. Sometimes these are really stuck in there because they've been in there more years than they should be. There we go. It's coming up. Let me get on the other side of it so it'll come out all the way. There we go. Stuck on the return line and there it is. When I pulled my injector out, I saw that my fire ring was on the bottom and the seal came out. That's good. Double check yours and make sure that your fire ring comes out with your injector. If it doesn't, use a pick to pick it out of the head because that's something you want to replace and you definitely don't want to double up on a fire ring. I have my injector in the test stand. You can see that my injector sprays without any pressure. When it does spray, there's not an atomization of the fuel and I only have fuel coming out of three holes at the bottom instead of all four. All of these characteristics indicate to me that the injectors were indeed the problem on this tractor. So at this point, you have two options for the repair of your injectors. That's it, you can repair it, meaning put a new tip on it, or you just buy a brand new injector that's ready to just drop right into the tractor. So if you decide you want to save a little bit of money and just replace the tips, I'll show you how to do that next. I have my old injector into the vise here. Notice that I have the injector set up on two bolts. I don't want to clamp right onto the injector because I don't want to damage it because I want to reuse the top part of the injector. So I'm going to screw this bottom off and then the tip will be right there. Here's my old tip. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to pull the injector right off the stand and here I have some diesel fuel inside my bowl and my brand new tip is already inside the bowl here. I am going to assemble the new tip onto my injector underneath fuel so that um, it doesn't install dry. Notice that there are two pins on the injector 
itself that line up with the pins on the tip. So I have that set where it should be, and then I'm going to put my new end on it. I'm just going to slide that over and get it started, and then I can tighten it up the rest of the way back on the vise. I have the cap of my injector completely tightened up to about the same level as where it was before. That ensures to me that I did get my pins lined up on the tip when I was under the fuel. So watch your threads and tighten it to about the same amount as what you had before you started. I have my new tipped injector into my test stand. Let's see how it has improved by replacing the tip. Very good. You can see that my injector chatters. That's good. Also, it sprays out of all four nozzles and it has a good atomization of the fuel. I don't have any drooling. Those are all positive things that I want to see in an injector after it has been rebuilt. Also, this injector releases or sprays at the correct amount of pressure. So this has been a good and successful repair. If you want to save yourself a little bit of money, you can replace just the tips as long as the top of your injector is okay and in good repair. Or if you are into ease of repair, you can just purchase a brand new injector. Either way, at this point, you're ready to put your replacement injector into the tractor. When you are ready to make this repair on your own tractor, you can purchase the parts on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. You're going to need to make a few decisions about the parts that you buy, so let me roll through them so that you can make a really informed purchase. First is that you definitely want to replace your filter. You can purchase the complete filter setup with both the aluminum on top and the glass on bottom. These two pieces break often, so if yours breaks, you can easily replace it just buying the whole casing. If for some reason, though, you only need to replace the glass, we do offer that separate from the entire casing. Or if your glass and aluminum is okay, you can just replace the filter right here. And when you buy the filter, it comes with the little O-rings and gaskets that you need for your filter. The next decision you'll make is whether you're going to buy a brand new injector, like this one, or if you are going to replace just the tip of your injector. You're going to make that decision based off of how much time and skill you have, but whether you purchase a brand new injector or just the tips, you always need to purchase one seal kit for every injector that you buy. The seal kit comes with this seal, it comes with the fire ring for the bottom, and then the two washers for the top of the injector. So you need one seal kit for every injector or injector tip that you buy. Your last choice for purchasing is if you need to replace your injector lines. We offer these lines. We have a four cylinder set and we have a three cylinder set. These are bent to go exactly onto your tractor. If you needed a new line and you were gonna try to make one and finagle this around the way that it has to be, you would spend way more time than it's worth. You can just buy a brand new set of injector lines that are gonna work easily for you. You do need to know that these injector lines are only appropriate for the early inline SIN style pump if you've updated to a later style rotary type pump, then these lines won't be suitable for your tractor. But if you have that early pump, definitely consider putting new lines on your tractor when you make all these other repairs. I'm ready to put my new fire ring onto the injector. I like to just put a little bit of grease right here on the end so that when I put the fire ring on, it stays on the injector when I drop it into the hole. I don't lose it um, down in there. So I'm ready to put my injector in. First, I'm going to put that seal over the top and the seal goes all the way up, just like that. And now the injector will drop in. Notice that I have my inlet for the high pressure injection line facing the right direction. And I'm moving my return line out of the way and then that just slides down just like that. And I'll tighten up these two bolts first and I'll tighten them at even times. Then I'm gonna reattach my high pressure line and then the return line up here on the top, I have two washers, and this is a little bit tricky. I'm gonna put one washer underneath here, like that, then the return line, then the second washer, and then my banjo bolt. So they gotta all go in order like that. I'm gonna hold that in place, and then I put my banjo bolt in there. My next step here is to replace the filter. 
You'll need a 7 16 size wrench for the tap here, and this is going to spin all the way around. When it does, it's going to loosen up the bottom, and I have my hand underneath here to catch it so that the bottom doesn't fall down to the floor. I have a pan to catch all that extra fuel that's dripping. <laughs> there we go. With that out of the way, the filter drops down next, and we're ready for a new one. My new filter comes with two new seals for the top and the bottom. I already pulled out my old seal. I used a pick like this one to pull it out. And then I have my new replacement seal up here already. With that, I'm ready to put my filter into place. I'm just going to set it right there. And then my seal is going to set down into the bottom of there. Notice that it fits just perfectly like that. I'm going to line everything up. And then I'll start this bolt with my fingers and tighten it the rest of the way with that wrench. Your next step is to bleed the system. You loosen up your bleeder back here with a 9 16 inch wrench. Loosen that up and then wait until the fuel comes out. You'll see it come first bubbly. You want to wait until it runs out clear and then you tighten that bleeder back up. You usually can bleed your system if your tank is all the way full. You're going to have to put diesel fuel all the way through the top of your tank and then it will flow down. If you can't do that, you could use a blow-off nozzle that has a cover around it so that the top of the tank is completely covered and spray some uh, air in there and that will build up the pressure a lot quicker if you don't have time to wait for it to feed on its own on gravity. However, only do that if you have a cover for the entire opening of your fuel tank. You don't want to spray air in there and then have fuel come shooting back out at you. So use some caution on that tip. If you don't have that capability, just wait for it. It'll happen by gravity. Once it's running clear, go ahead and tighten your bleeder back up. I'm ready to start this tractor up and see the improvements that we've made. I am very pleased with that. You can see that it started up easily on its own and quickly. You didn't have to keep cranking it. Uh, we didn't have any excessive smoke coming from it, and it also had really good throttle response. Those are all things that I like to see on a tractor after I have worked on it. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you and it gives you the confidence to make this repair on your own tractor. When you're ready to do so, please purchase the parts on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. I realize that you can purchase injectors many, many places, but I would ask for your business at my site to help to fund future tractor tutorials.